Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I just want to thank you all for being here tonight, today, this morning, and just want to recognize a few of elected officials. We have Senator Robin Kennedy, Senator Moore, Representative Mahoney, Representative Keith, State Manager Eric Batista, of course, our WRA board, with, led by Peter Dunn, Mike Trainer, and Richard Burke. And uh, it's, I just want to say it's great to see the Lieutenant Governor again here in the city of Worcester. Thank you. And also General Manager Peter Eng. I hope your train ride was on time, and you're right here, <laughs> and comfortable. And uh, I'm so grateful for the work that has been done between the city of Worcester, the MBTA, and the Department of Transportation. I feel like the recent work of the MBTA task force has been a great step forward. The center platform will also be a great improvement as it pertains to train operations here in the city of Worcester. Having multiple platforms will allow for even more reliable service and more frequent, frequent trains. This platform is also fully accessible, which is crucial to make sure that riders are accommodate here in the city of Worcester. I've, heard a lot, I've learned a lot about trains in the last several years, and I know that flexibility and collaboration are the key components of making it all work together, and I just want to thank the Lieutenant Governor for stepping up when we needed cooperation. So thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Much appreciated. These investments will make our community real, will make the transit between Worcester and Boston more accessible in a way that is environmentally conscious, efficient, and more enjoyable than sitting through the traffic on the Mass Pike. I look forward to our continued working relationship I am grateful for the collaboration between our local and state partners. Our state delegation has done a great job on this also. I just want to thank them personally also. And uh, I'd like to now I'd like to introduce the general manager of the MPTA, Mr. Ain. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, and thank you, Mayor Petty, for those kind words and for hosting us here today in Worcester in this beautiful train hall that we all stand. And thank you to all the dignitaries here today, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, State Senator Kennedy, State Senator Moore, Representative Keep, State Representative Mahoney, and Mayor Petty of Worcester, of course, City Manager Batista, Director Goodwine, and former LG CEO Mary, um, CEO Mary Worcester, and Regional Chamber of Commerce, uh, and the riders are all here today to join us, and of course the media. On behalf of the entire MBTA, I'm really excited to join you all here as we mark a significant milestone in enhancing transportation services to the city of Worcester and the surrounding communities. The opening of the center platform represents a crucial step in forward in ongoing efforts for the MBTA to improve service delivery. I'd like to extend a heartfelt thanks to the Healy Driscoll administration for their steadfast support of this project and their dedication in improving public transit across Massachusetts. I'm particularly excited about the establishment of a working group to collaboratively explore full potential of Worcester's commuter rail system. This collaborative approach will ensure that Worcester has a strong voice in helping us to shape the future of MBTA service in the region. This was also made possible with the state and federal and local investments, totaling over $79 million. In addition to our federal partners, I'd also like to thank um, and the invaluable contributions of the Worcester Chamber of Commerce, Worcester Police, Worcester Fire Department, City of Worcester, and the Worcester Redevelopment Authority. Your partnership has been crucial, particularly in addressing the ongoing waterproofing efforts in this historic building. Also, I forgot to thank the Worcester Regional Transit Authority as well. Thank you very much. The Worcester Union Station has been a cornerstone of this community since 1911, originally serving as a stop on the Boston and Albany Railroad Main Line. Rep. Mahoney, we chatted about that earlier. Today, we're not just honoring that rich history, we're building upon it. The new center island platform represents a quantum leap in our infrastructure. By prioritizing accessibility and safety, we're creating a station that better serves our community and accommodates future growth. The ability to accommodate two trains simultaneously will enhance operational efficiency and significantly reduce dwell times, alleviating congestion along the Worcester line and improving the overall passenger experience. On average, for, per week, this line carries 75,000 riders. It's our second busiest line behind the Providence Stoughton line. And with our continued strong return of ridership, particularly on weekends, this upgrade is invaluable. Moreover, this upgrade extends our capacity to support additional MBTA commuter rail and also Amtrak inner city passenger rail services, including future expansions like the East-West Rail Service. It's an investment in our future 
preparing us to meet the region's evolving transit needs. And beyond the platform, we've completed construction on two new station access points, a pedestrian tunnel linking the platform to historic station building and a modern pedestrian bridge to the extended, expanded parking lot. Added to three new elevators, upgraded stairways, improved safety measures, and we're ensuring seamless connectivity and accessibility for all the passengers and riders. This platform opening is just a part of a host of advice, investments in Worcester. We've restored a morning express train to Boston and invested $20 million in signal repairs to enable more frequent service in the future on the Worcester line. The success of the Union Station's transformation is a testament to the dedication and leadership and support of the Healy Driscoll administration and our local leaders, including the Worcester Task Force. Their championing of this improvement has been invaluable. And with that, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. Hey, good morning, everyone. It is always a great day when I can start here in Worcester in this beautiful building. Mayor, if there is a more beautiful building in Worcester, I'm not sure where it is. This is one of my favorite spots, and I'm so pleased to be here to celebrate investments with all of you, members of the delegation who are here, municipal officials, including the mayor and city manager, Batista, because I think Worcester is a really good example of getting it right on so many fronts. Uh, coming together with an aligned vision, local officials, private sector businesses. I know we mentioned former LG, former mayor, now Worcester uh, CEO, uh, Worcester Chamber CEO Tim Murray. So many others who come together to support Worcester in an aligned vision. And this is part of it. This very building and the renovation of it that took place several years ago is all part of what I like to think of as Team Worcester. People with an aligned goal, thinking about a vision for not only today, but for the future. And I don't think there's a city in the Commonwealth that does it better than Worcester. So congratulations for all your success. This is another piece of it and an important piece of it. I want to congratulate uh, General Manager Phil Eng and the entire team from the MBTA who was here, who played a role in shaping and helping us ensure that these new investments uh, could be carried forward. What a terrific opportunity to invest in a historic building in a historic city that's really on the move. And frankly, a critical part of our state's transportation infrastructure network. The people of Worcester deserve a great station and this investment is about delivering on that. As the GM mentioned, it's not only going to improve functionality, uh, things like a single uh, high platform, improvements in elevators and tunnels in the concourse. It doesn't sound sexy, but it is so meaningful to riders, enhancing that functionality for anyone who uses this station. And that's a lot of people, as was mentioned. Those are students who might be coming to school here. These are residents who are leaving to go to or from for work or medical appointments or whatever it may be. And right here in the heart of the Commonwealth, this is an important connection point. By making these upgrades, it's also going to help us with expansions like East-West Rail, improving the interconnection throughout the entire Commonwealth. And for us, that's an important equity goal, ensuring that we have not only ways for people to get around, supporting the growth right here in Worcester. We're seeing incredible housing growth, something that's a key to uh, the success that we have to follow in this Commonwealth to ensure that people can live here. Uh, the connections as we think about Western Mass and what this, these improvements are gonna mean to ensure that we have the sort of train service we wanna have connecting the Commonwealth in various places and what this is going to mean for the individuals who will be coming to Worcester to work. This is not just about one-way travel, getting people from here uh, into Boston. This is about ensuring that people in other parts of the Commonwealth can come here. And having a real regional network of public transit requires us to make investments like this, making it easier for everyone to get around, and that key access, whoever might be physically challenged to be able to get right onto the train, making uh, that access available for everyone. These are the sorts of investments that we know are so critical to support a growing economy. And that's why we're so pleased to be here and celebrate not only with Worcester residents, with the legislature who funds these important investments to ensure that we can continue to deliver on what people need, getting people where they want to go, when they want to get there, safe, reliable, accessible way is key to the success of the Commonwealth. So I'm so glad that we could not only celebrate with all the partners that made that happen, as I'm looking at all many of the men and women who work for the T every single day, we're committed to building on this progress. Think of this as, you know, a step in a plan to ensure we've got safe, reliable transit across this state. We know that is what General Manager Phil Eng can bring for us here. We know that is what is leading our effort, not just in Worcester, but across the Commonwealth 
to ensure that this commuter rail system is the best it possibly can be in delivering for the people of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So grateful to be with all of you to celebrate this day. Hooray for Worcester continuing to make the sorts of investments. I know the Transportation Task Force that we've developed here is only going to help lead those efforts to craft that vision, get everybody aligned, and work together to ensure investments like this not only work for the people who live here today, but for the generation yet to come. Congratulations and looking forward to touring the new, the new pathways. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. I'd like to introduce and bring up to the podium uh, State Representative Mary Keefe. Thank you, Mary. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. Um, it's very exciting. I parked over beyond the new platform and the um, elevated walkway and walked in, and I was sort of thinking, where am I, right? <laughs> it's very exciting, and thank you for talking about this important um, improvement and that it isn't just a way to get into Boston it's a way for people to get to Worcester as well and thank you also for talking about the history because every time I'm in this building I remember something that happened with my family 35 years ago um, it happened that the Barnum and Bailey Circus came to town and the elephants got off the train somewhere over here and we came down and sat on the front steps so we could see the elephants walk downtown. And my six-year-old turned around and looked at the building. It was empty. It was a ghost. And he said, what is this? Why is this like this? And here we are today. It's magnificent and so important in terms of our community. So thank you everyone for having something to do with this today. I'm excited and I'm excited to um, see this improvement for everyone. So thank you all. Thank you, State Rep. Uh, um, I would like to uh, confirm uh, both the LG and the State Rep mentioned the reverse commute and this morning when we took the 730 train out of Boston to come to Worcester uh, there were quite a number of riders taking that train and I think that's what you see as you when you do improve service when you do improve the ability for two-way travel um, not only do you uh, bring people into the heart of Boston but you bring people out and that creates jobs in, in all the areas that we serve so I'm really proud of that uh, and with that I'd like to bring up city manager Batista Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for being here. Again, I'm pleased to join us in celebrating the opening of the new center platform, which improves, again, the accessibility, capacity, efficiency, safety, and also the levels of service to this beautiful Union Station. As you all know, these upgrades also enhance Union Station as an intermodal transportation hub that connects residents, workers, and visitors to and from Boston, like many have mentioned and is a key step in making the West East Rail a reality. This new platform is an example of a critical investment in transportation, which strengthens the economy, increases the growth of mid-sized cities like Worcester, helping create jobs, accommodate commuters, and generate tourism. This project is also a great example of a collaboration of at all levels of government, as the city, the Commonwealth, Worcester Redevelopment Authority, Worcester Regional Transit Authority, and critically funding the Tr Federal Transit Administration came together to make all of this reality. So as you can see, everybody coming together to make this a reality. So we look forward to continued partnership and to implement further improvements in association with Worcester's recently established MBTA commuter rail. And I know many of the folks of the working group are here. And I see John Irwin, President Rougeau, and also Tracy Novak here represented um, in our and our chair, Richard Burke, who's back there hiding. Uh, collectively, we believe we can connect New England's two largest cities. We can connect New England's two largest cities, Boston and Worcester, with convenient, dependable, and efficient public train service in under one hour. We can do that. I also want to, make, to take a moment to recognize that our vision for Union Station is first and foremost a transportation hub. This is a hub but we've been intentionally activating the space within, within and also around Union Station to create amenities for commuters, additionally vitality and economic development opportunities. 
Over the past few years within the station, we have created a mix tenacities with Luciano's, the Cannabis Control Co uh, Commission offices, the 961 restaurant and, and lounge, and also the Worcester Regional Food Hub, who is under, uh, right now under construction, right underneath us. The Washington Square Urban Renewal Plan, spearheaded by the Worcester Regional uh, Redevelopment Authority, started with the critical restoration of this building, which has been mentioned before. But also, it laid the foundation for the transit-oriented development that we are seeing today around this Union Station. The first, the Bristol Corporation built the Home Goods Suites that is right uh, in front of us across the street and also are currently working on another hotel concept on the last parcel here remaining in Washington Square. The historic Mission Chapel at 205 Summer Street, which, which was in the Preservation Worcester's most endangered structure list, has finally been given new life as new living spaces for seven households. There's also over 1,500 units of housing recently completed under construction or planned within a short walk dis walking distance to Union Station. Many of these units have been supported by our partners in the state government with affordable housing resources as well as the Housing Development Incentive Program. So again, we applaud and I applaud the leadership of Healy and Driscoll administration for their commitment to addressing the housing crisis across the Commonwealth and for understanding the important, the important connections between housing opportunities and our public transportation access. So again, I'd like to thank the Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Tibbetts uh, Nuts, uh, General Manager, Engineer in the MBTA for the investment in Worcester. Thank you to, to the Worcester Re, uh, Redevelopment Authority led by Executive Director Peter Dunn and Worcester Regional Transit Authority for helping to facilitate this project. And again, thank you to our state delegation, our federal delegation for advocating for transportation and infrastructure projects like this one in Worcester. And I can't go on without thanking the mayor and the city council for their continued support as we make Worcester a public transportation friendly city. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mayor. I do, uh, uh, City Manager, I'm sorry. Uh, I want to express my gratitude again to Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and the Healy Driscoll administration for the dedication to the MBTA, the services that we provide, our workforce, and the communities that we serve, like Worcester. I'm proud of the relentless efforts of the MBTA operations and engineering and capital delivery teams. The teams here are responsible for hosting today's celebrations and thankful for the backing of the Worcester community and of course to all of our riders. We could not do this without you and you're the reason that we're here today. Um, so that concludes our today's programs. I'll open it up to questions and I'll ask that we take on topic questions and I'll be happy to take off topic questions off to the side after the, uh, the event is over. Um, so with that we'll take on topic questions. responses that you received. Just one moment. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. This, this project took over two and a half years, almost two and a half years to complete. What were some of the challenges that made the project go on for so long? Well, um, when this project started, I, you know, some of this was during the uh, the end of COVID and uh, a lot of challenges with material supplies and um, just construction logistics. Uh, I'm really pleased though, however, that we're able to deliver this project. We had anticipated um, opening it earlier, uh, slightly, but right here today is, is a proud day for all of us. Okay, I think we'll, we'll take a walk at the platform.